Hey everyone and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. It feels so great to be back in front of the camera and doing a feature video for you guys. As well, over the last four weeks, it has been very crazy, very wild due to the circumstances. Now, I do have to say though, this is one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had on this channel in over the three years of filming. Because for the first time ever, I have access to every single car on inventory. I have nothing but time, and I'm basically here on the lot by myself. So this is actually a great opportunity to do a feature video of a Subaru WRX. Now in most of my videos, we just check out one trim and one particular car. However, I have keys to every single WRX and STI out front at the dealership, so that means we can check out more than one WRX and see what might be the perfect package and trim for you when it comes to buying your WRX. Now before we get in this review, I'd like to thank Subaru of Wakefield in Wakefield, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Subaru inventory. Due to the circumstances, the showroom is not open to customers to help stop the spread of COVID-19. However, that doesn't mean you can't buy your new Subaru from the comforts of your own home. By visiting the Subaru of Wakefield website, you can take advantage of the virtual non-contact buying experience where you can research both new and used cars at the dealership, check out the online inventory, and find the perfect car for you. It's a simple, hassle-free, and convenient way to buy online, and Subaru of Wakefield offers a list of great services to help you buy your new or used vehicle. The dealership will also offer a virtual walk-around of the car you're interested in. So just like we're doing right now on Boston Auto Blog, you can check out the car and buy it from your couch, or even your bed, so you don't have to leave your house to buy a car, which is amazing. So uh, definitely check out what Subaru's offering right now. They have a huge selection of inventory from new and used cars. So right now is the perfect time to buy a new car. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. When you think of cars under $40,000 that have appealed to car enthusiasts for years, if not decades, what is it that makes them so iconic? Is it the performance, the pricing, the sporty appearance, or the fact that a male transmission still comes standard? For the WRX, it's a mixture of everything, but more so now than ever, this Subaru is the very essence of being a driver's car. It's one of the last remaining vehicles on the market in 2020 that never truly abandoned its identity, while also still retaining a sense of affordability on the new car market, which has certainly played a role in drawing in younger enthusiasts. With a racing pedigree that speaks to the hearts of car enthusiasts, the Subaru WRX of today comes from a proud automotive lineage 
that started in the mid-90s at the World Rally Championship. 25 years later, here we are with the final model year of the most successful generation for the WRX. This car has ushered in a new wave of enthusiasts of all ages, and its performance and pricing is why it could be argued to be one of the best cars money could buy around $35,000. Today, we have both the premium and limited trims, one having the 6-speed male transmission and the other being equipped with the optional CVT. This was a first for Subaru, as the WRX has always been paired with the manual transmission. But as we'll discuss later in this video, the automatic is actually rather significant for this model and its future. More importantly for this generation, however, is the fact that it does not share the same underpinnings as the Impreza and won't adopt the Subaru Global Platform until the 2021 model year. This leads us into the road presence and design language of the WRX, as its aggressive and sporty aesthetics is what makes it popular with enthusiasts. Obviously, when you think of the WRX, you can't help but focus on Subaru's signature hood scoop, which was once common for Japanese sports cars. Varying depending on the trim, the front fascia differs slightly as the Premium's fog light housing will have a functional turn signal indicator, while the Limited's upgraded LED steering responsive headlights and LED fog lights not only modernize the WRX, but also cleans up the lower front bumper. Within the context of 2020 for new cars, the WRX is one of the last remaining sports cars of its segment, and when compiling a list of non-domestic fun daily drivers, Subaru has one of the most aggressive sedans on the market for around $30,000. Moving over to the side profile, both the premium and limited trims will sit on 18-inch aluminum alloy wheels with dark gray finish, providing a nice contrast with the body color. On limited, you'll receive heated body color folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators, giving the WRX a sleek look. Coming around back, the quad exhaust and rear diffuser will likely draw your attention first as this generation's aggressive styling is far more pronounced than the model that preceded it when pertaining to the back end, and a subtle rear spoiler adds some additional character to the WRX. For performance, the WRX is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged boxer 4-cylinder engine that puts out 268 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque, and can be paired with a 6-speed male transmission or a CVT. Setting this car apart from most competitors that are similarly priced, the standard symmetrical all-wheel drive system gives the WRX an advantage, as most non-domestic rivals are for the most part front-wheel drive. For fuel economy, you can expect to receive 21 miles per gallon in the city and 27 miles per gallon on the highway. Now before we talk about the interior, let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? And that is the automatic transmission, which you guys have probably already talked about and have already commented in this video so far. But I wanted to do this for numerous reasons, and one is to really uh, talk about what's going on in the automotive industry, because to have a CVT and an automatic transmission in a WRX is very significant. And when you look at the competition that the WRX was going up against even you know, three years ago, uh, that competition is no longer here with us in the United States. The Focus ST and RS no longer sold in this country. Uh, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo, no longer here. Now, the Evo did offer an automatic near the end of its life cycle, but it was primarily a managed transmission. And now, Hyundai is offering a dual-clutch transmission in the Veloster N. So, automatics are definitely the new trend. But more importantly, though, it's this transmission right here that keeps the 6 speed male transmission in the WRX. It keeps the WRX nameplate alive. This is the direction the automotive industry is heading in. And to have enthusiast cars like this, you need to have a automatic transmission. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to pinpoint that. I wanted to talk about it because um, a lot of people just skim over the fact that, that there is a CVT, but really let's get into the importance of the fact that, well, this transmission right here, despite the fact that we hate it, and the fact that, <laughs> despite the fact that we don't like automatics in our enthusiast cars, it's this right here that's what's going to allow us to drive a manual transmission still in this decade. Inside the premium, six-way manually adjustable cloth seats come standard, with the option to upgrade to the Recaros as part of the performance package. For the limited, power adjustable heated leather seats come standard, giving drivers added comfort. In front of you, in the center of the analog gauges, is a digital display that provides a variety of information, while also giving you access to Subaru safety systems. 
Above the infotainment system is a secondary screen, which can be found in most current Subaru models. From here, you've got a boost gauge, a digital readout of your fuel economy and climate control settings, and additional info and settings to scroll through. For the premium and limited trims, you'll receive a 7-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. The limited we have today is also equipped with onboard navigation in the upgraded Harman Kardon premium audio system. Responsiveness and resolution are good for the WRX, with quick access buttons found on either side of the touchscreen. You'll get a rear backup camera to go along with blind spot detection and rear automatic braking. Below, you'll find the knobs to the climate control settings, and overall the dashboard is very user friendly and cleanly laid out. As we get closer to the center console, a cubby for your smartphone provides a convenient storage area and a 12 volt outlet. The switches for your two level heated seats can be found tucked away near the cup holders. And for the center storage compartment, you'll find enough room for small items and two USB inputs. And rounding out the front seating area, a power moonroof that comes standard for the premium and limited trims will let in a lot of natural light. Now the best part about the Super Double X though is it's all around versatility and practicality because you can fit people in the back. Now one of the reasons why the WRX really does well with a lot of younger enthusiasts, a lot of people in their 30s and 40s, is because you can have a family and have a fun car to drive on a daily basis. Now I have enough room back here, the seat's adjusted a little bit further back, but I have a room where I'm comfortable. Now obviously I'm 5'5", five five, so I'm not the tallest person out there. But most likely you're not going to have, you know, people that are always tall or a lot more adults back here all the time. So I think, you know, when it comes to rear legroom, that's a bit overstated or overrated in my opinion, because you're mostly going to have either kids or smaller people back here, especially if you are a younger enthusiast with a growing family. Now for the center seat, you do have some nice placements for your feet in the center. Obviously the rear hump is very aggressive, so definitely take that into consideration. With cars of this size, I always say it's really best to just have two people back here. I think to fit a, a third person in the back, uh, especially depending on how tall they are, how big they are, uh, that would be quite the squeeze. Now for me, I could fit back here. I, I'd be comfortable depending on, on the size of the people next to me, but this definitely works uh, and the seating position isn't that bad. And then for the driver's side, I adjusted the seat to someone of my height and I have plenty of legroom. So considering the size of the vehicle and also considering my personal height, uh, this definitely works for people um, with, you know, a younger family, a growing family, or, you know, just on, you know, shorter drives with friends. This definitely, definitely works. Also back here, you do have a center armrest with two cup holders. So you have a nice little armrest for yourself. And also what I like as well is that on the doors, you do have soft touch padding. So this is definitely very comfortable on, you know, a drive as a passenger, I'd be very comfortable back here. So in terms of the Deborah X being a great daily driver, this is perfect for anybody who does have, you know, people in the back on a daily basis. So definitely like the Deborah X in terms of its practicality and usability if you have more than two people in your family. Now for rear cargo space, you can expect to receive right around 12 cubic feet of rear cargo room, which actually adds on to the practicality of the WRX because we've already talked about the fact that you can fit at least two people in the back. You have the all wheel drive system, which makes this car perfect for year round driving and winter driving more importantly. And now that you have the extra cargo room, this is really a step up from a two door sports car like the BRZ. So I like to say that the WRX is really your growing car. You're growing as a car enthusiast, you're aging as an adult, and you have that extra room for groceries, smaller items, but also you have that extra room overall if you do have a family that is starting to grow. So at the end of the day, the Subaru WRX really is a great all around car. And in fact, you could make the argument it's the last of its segment because when you start looking at the list of cars it goes up against today in 2020, they're not traditional. So there's no Focus ST, there's no Focus RS, there's no Mitsubishi Lancer Evo. I wouldn't even compare this to a GTI or a um, Honda SI or Type R. And the reason why I say that is because for around $28,000, you get all-wheel drive standard and you get a manual transmission, where from Volkswagen, you're paying $40,000 for a Golf R. So $12,000 more affordable. I see exactly why younger car enthusiasts in their 20s and 30s would prefer a WRX over a, a product from Volkswagen.
but also if you don't want to go with the base trim, you can go with leather seats. Also optional Recaro for the premium. You do have the Harman Kardon premium audio system for the limited along with the bigger touchscreen with onboard navigation. So this car really offers a great package in my opinion. And one of the reasons why I would put the WRX as one of the best options you can go with for a car priced around twenty-eight dollars to $35,000. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.